My brothers and sisters, it is indeed important for us to remind one another to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I advise you and myself to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be always conscious of the fact that everything we do, everything we say, we are answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will definitely be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like those before us who were wealthier and healthier, more powerful, more recognized, have already returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a similar way, we too have to return to Allah. So prepare for that day. You and I know that five times a day we are called in a certain direction. And the caller reminds us because it is that prescription from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the caller to call out five times a day even though we know our duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no place on earth whereby your duty is known, what is required of you is known, and every single time you have to do it, you are reminded again in a loud way. It doesn't happen for anything besides salah, the five daily prayers. It is the only action, the only work, if I can call it, although it's not actually work, but it is the only action, let's say, or act of worship where every single day, every single day, so many times a day, you are called towards it. Have you ever thought, why? Why repeat it so many times? It's enough to tell me once, twice in my life that, listen, you need to pray five times a day, and that's it. And I am supposed to be human enough. We would get irritated if someone kept telling us every day, you've got to go to school at seven o'clock. You've got to go to school at seven o'clock. And repeat it not once, two, three, four, five times. Repeat it, for example, the adhan, twice you hear, come to the prayer. And twice you hear it again in what is known as the iqama, just before the prayer, come to the prayer. Wasn't it enough for Allah to just put it in the Quran, wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah? Wasn't it enough for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to just inform us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon you five salah, as is in the hadith, for example, of Mu'adh ibn Jabal when he was sent to Yemen, inna ka ta'ti qawman ahla kitab, and the long hadith at the end, or somewhere in the middle, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, fa'alimhum anna Allah haftarada alayhim khamsa salawatin fi kulli yawmin wa layla. Let them know that Allah has prescribed upon them five prayers every day and night. There are five in that cycle. But Allah says, no, we want you to call out for this prayer every single time. In the Arabic language, one of the reasons, iqamat al alayk, for there to be evidence against you on the day of judgment. Did you hear the call? Yes, I did. Well, if you did, why didn't you read the salah? Why didn't you fulfill that prayer? We told you, not only did we say, come to prayer, but we told you what you would achieve through that prayer. That means come to the prayer. But you will hear immediately after that, come to success. Every one of us, male and female, young and old, we are looking for success. There is no success beyond that which Allah has promised you. You can never be truly successful if you have disconnected from your five daily prayers. And evidence of it is manifest in the adhan, in the call itself. You want success? Well, we are going to show you step one. Step one. And this is why the hadith says the first thing that a person will be reckoned in the hereafter is their salah. If the salah is in order, everything else will be easy. If the salah is not in order, the rest of it what do you expect? It's going to be difficult and tough. May Allah have mercy on, it, on, on us on that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us. So if you look at the call, it is 
bearing witness for us or against us? I called you, did you come? The answer sometimes is no. And this is why when an, a blind man once asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked the messenger, he said, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am a blind man and I find it difficult to come to the masjid. Should I, or am I given an excuse, etc.? The end of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Atasma'un nida? Do you hear the call? Do you hear the adhan? He said, yes. He says, fa'ajib. In that case, you need to answer it. Subhanallah. I know one might argue, okay, nowadays we don't have, uh, or at that time they didn't have these loud hailers and microphones, while at that time they didn't have vehicles as well. They didn't have cars and other facilities. So if you have heard it and it's very close to your home, then you would definitely fall under the same category. The, the issue I want to raise today, my brothers and sisters, many of us, many of us, do not fulfill our five salah. And we expect success. We want happiness. We want goodness. We want contentment. We want everything to flow. My brothers and sisters, really, do you think it's fair? We did a survey online recently about how many people read Quran on a daily basis. And you won't believe it. The majority of Muslims say we don't. Subhanallah. The majority of Muslims say, we don't. And someone told me when I forwarded him the results of this, he said some time back, he did a little survey of how many people fulfill five salah a day. And those who participated, perhaps maybe it's wrong for me to say the majority, but those who, the majority of those who participated in the survey, they said, we don't fulfill five salah a day. Some say four, some say three, and some say Jumu'ah and Eid. Subhanallah. May Allah not make us from among those who are oblivious of this great gift of His. Wallahi, it is an honor. It is an honor. Something we should be proud of to be invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put our head on the ground for Him who made us, for He who has absolute control of every aspect of our living and he who sh whom we shall return to put your head on the ground take your time you say oh you who created me ya rabbi you are the highest subhana rabbi al a'la you are glorifying praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying you are the highest amazing it is an honor take your time in sujood look you want to be close to the owner of the solutions of your problems you need to start off by fulfilling your five daily prayers it might be a simple khutbah but i promise you we have a problem the problem is many of us feel lazy to fulfill our salah and this is not one gender both the males and the females subhanallah we get lazy and sometimes we read it when it's convenient for us let me tell you, the joy you will achieve, the greatest joy you will achieve is when you fulfill that salah when it is difficult for you. Then it becomes really an ibadah that is worthwhile within your heart. You know, sometimes it's very easy. You are in a group of people. Everyone is fulfilling salah. You feel bad to leave it out. So you are fulfilling it. Yes, mashallah. It's good that you have good company. At least you fulfill salah with them. But a winner is he or she whom, when everything is against you, and you say, no, 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 my salah. This is my salah. There is no excuse for a mu'min, for a person who believes in Allah in the last day, subhanallah, to quit or to leave that salah, even if it is one. Recently, there was someone discussing the topic of salah and one of the youngsters said, no, I'm a Muslim, but I don't pray. I'm a Muslim, but I don't pray. So the question was posed to the young man. Well, why don't you pray? Well, I don't think it's that important. Allah is forgiving. I do pray on a Friday and I do pray sometimes when I can. My brothers and sisters, that is such a dangerous answer. It's like saying I'm a vegetarian, but I eat beef. You are a vegetarian, but you eat beef. It means you cannot call yourself a vegetarian. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So one is to say, I'm a Muslim and I'm trying my best to fulfill all my salah. By the will of Allah, you still recognize that your duty is to fulfill the five salah, but you might not be that strong. There is hope for you, inshallah. I'm not saying it's good what you're doing, but inshallah, you can get to what you're supposed to be doing. But what I'm talking about is something worse than that. It is when a person says, 
that I'm a Muslim, but I don't have to read Salah. That's what I'm talking about. How can you say that? One of the pillars of Islam is the five daily prayer. You know that Buni al Islam ala khams. Islam is based on five principles, five pillars. Shahadati Allah ilaha illallah wa anni rasulullah wa iqamis salah wa ita'is zakah wa sawmi ramadan wa hajjil bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila. You know the five pillars of Islam in such a beautiful manner that I don't need to translate what I just said now in the Arabic language. So my brothers and sisters, if you want success, short term, long term, in this world, in the next, you want contentment, you want Allah to be pleased with you, you have to start off. The stepping stone is salah. According to one narration, salah is the pillar of the deen. If you are to uplift it, you'll uplift everything else. And if you drop it, you, you've dropped your whole deen. And according to another narration, the difference between a believer and he who doesn't is actually salah. You want to know the difference? It is salah. So I want to inform you today. And it's a simple message, like I said. But wallahi, we are struggling as an ummah. We have so many issues, so many disputes, so much happening across the globe. You perhaps know maybe more than I do regarding some of the matters affecting not only us, but an entire ummah, subhanAllah. Humanity is struggling. Let's get closer to Allah. Don't you agree he's the owner of the solution? Don't you agree he's the owner? He's the sustainer? You want wealth? Well, you need to first start off with your salah. Allah will provide for you. Allah will provide for you. He will give you. He has said that he will provide for everyone. So develop a relationship with him. He'll give you contentment. I'd like to really encourage myself and yourselves to fulfill this beautiful pillar of Islam, not considering it a chore, but an honor. Do it with a smile. People say, I read Salah, but my child or my children don't. And sometimes when you ask them further, you find out that when they are fulfilling their Salah, the expression on their face is that of sadness. The expression on their face is that of fulfilling a job or a chore that is very difficult. So they are looking very sleepy and they get up last minute and they, they, they really get over with it as though they are in a gym engaging in some gymnastics and thereafter they are completed and they are back into bed or they have disappeared. When the children watch this, they would not be interested in fulfilling salah, even though you are fulfilling it. The reason is your expression. The reason is your attitude towards the salah. When you come for salah, when you come on a Friday, you're always late. You're always the last person. Your children, they won't even come. But if you come early and you come into the first saf or you try to sit at the beginning in, in the front section, etc., your children, if they were to follow you, perhaps if they were a little bit lazier, they'd make it to the second section. But if you made it to the second all the time, they would make it to the third. And if you made it to the third, they might not even be pitching up to that masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So when you get up early for Salatul Fajr, enthusiastic, you are smiling, your expression is good, you make the wudu, you feel so good, you've dressed in nice clothing, you stand in front, your children are watching you, they see mom and dad and the others, the older siblings perhaps are engaging in an act of worship that they are enjoying. You, you smile when you are completing your salah and you are so delighted and happy. Wallahi, they will see the contentment that there is in your face and they will want to be like that. When they fulfill it, they will do it with a smile. Subhanallah. This is an amazing piece of advice. We've seen it working and we need to make ourselves understand that it's our duty to pass the baton to our children. If you don't have the baton yourself, how are you going to pass it to your children? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May we be from among those who love fulfilling the five daily prayers. Come what may, don't let the day pass. Don't let the day pass without fulfilling your basic obligations unto Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So this is something my brothers and sisters, we need to keep talking about. We need to keep reminding each other. Some people say, no, do you know what? I have makeup on. I have makeup on. And for that reason, I read somewhere that I'm allowed to delay my salah. My sister, my sister, that is not true. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. You need to consider that Allah will grant you a nur and a beauty way beyond any makeup would be able to offer when you put your head on the ground for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. Man hasunat salatuhu fil layl, hasuna wajhuhu fil nahar. 
Do you know what that means? Whoever's salah is beautified in the night, in the darkest hours of the night, perhaps their face will be beautified during the day. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. With us, the basic duty, we're lazy to fulfill it. We feel that, you know, we wouldn't or we can't, we cannot because of my makeup, for example. That's just one example. The men are even worse sometimes because they, they don't have that makeup, but still they haven't fulfilled the salah. What excuse do you have? Not to say that the previous one wasn't a valid excuse, but it's saying that's even worse. There's nothing stopping you. If you cannot read standing, you read sitting. If you cannot read sitting, you read on your side. That's the beauty of this deen of Islam, where Allah's made it easy for us. My brothers and sisters, we can do better when it comes to this prayer. Remember one thing, what is your duty is the farad. What is your duty is the farad. If you have done that, you have fulfilled your duty. But if you were to expand and extend, it is to your favor because then you become closer and closer to Allah. We sometimes dilly-dally, even with our own farad. And you know what? You hear the adhan. The adhan is so powerful that shaitan runs away when he hears that call being called. He runs away. You know what that means? If you think for a moment, if you have run away as well after hearing the call, what does that make you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from among those who may be affected by the whispers of the devil when it comes to adhan. As he rushes, we rush with him. No, that shouldn't be the case. We should be the opposite. You call the adhan, Satan moves. But a mu'min, a true believer comes in. He comes in. We should be ashamed. You know, when your loved one, here I'm talking of a haram relationship, for example. Someone, someone you're in love with. Haram relationship. When they call you, how excited are you? You're excited. When they tell you, come here, you will be there. Even if they're just playing a prank, you would be there. Not once, twice, ten times, you would be there. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, consider this. If that is the case, where we try to impress those whom we love, even if the relationship might not be permissible, what about the most powerful relationship that can ever exist? You and your maker, Allahu Akbar. And he is calling you. He is calling you when he doesn't need you. And he is saying, come, come to prayer. Come to prayer. It's repeated twice in the Adhan. And you know, you might be thinking, well, what's there for me in that prayer? Before you can even ask that question, there is an answer. The answer is, come to success. Success, twice. Come to success, both in this world as well as in the next. Subhanallah, come. And in the morning prayer, because every one of us loves to sleep, you hear something, you hear something beyond that. What do you hear? As-salatu khayrum min an nawm Indeed, prayer is better than sleeping. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us success. Truly, we dream of that success. But stop dreaming. Get up and do something about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So remember my words. And obviously this is a reminder for myself. There is another very interesting point that I'd like to encourage you regarding. Remember the best prayer is that prayer that is read at the beginning time of that particular prayer. So if a person was to delay the prayer, what will happen is there'll come a time when shaitan tells you, you know what, there's still 10 minutes remaining. And I'm sure it's happened to all of us. It has happened to me too. There are a few minutes remaining. Don't worry, I'm fulfilling it just now. That just now delays you to the degree that there is a minute left and sometimes it's gone, astaghfirullah, and you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I have no excuse. What just happened? It was actually shaitan who made you say, just now, I'm fulfilling it just now. That just now actually came straight from shaitan. You heard the adhan, fulfill your salah. You know, nowadays we have applications on our phones that call out the adhan or the first few words of the adhan. Those applications, every Muslim loves to install them. Just like we love to install the Quran. I'm sure a lot of us, if not almost all of us, would be having one application of the Quran in your phone or one of these Islamic applications. The dangerous part is, as sweet as it sounds, it is going to bear witness against you. 
when you haven't taken heed. That's the dangerous part. Your phone call, subhanallah, there was an adhan that you could hear. You, you, you switched it off or you heard the first part of it and that's how the setting sometimes is. But you did not fulfill the salah. In that case, why did you insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by installing something you were never going to listen to? Never. Is it just an alarm to remind you what time of the day it is? No. It is supposed to be something that boosts you to be able to fulfill your obligation unto Allah. We watch people passing away. Nowadays with technology, we've seen it happen a lot. People pass away in the condition of salah while they're in sujood or just in the masjid before the salah, after the salah. There have been many video clips of people from the CCTV of various masajid that we've seen lately. What are the chances of you and I going in such a beautiful condition? Well, if you want to increase the chances, you need to fulfill salah. What's the point of saying, I'd like to die in sujood, but you don't fulfill sujood? You don't read the salah, then how are you going to die in sujood? So we ask Allah to make it easy for us. Do not delay the salah. As soon as the time sets in, try your best to make haste or at least start doing things that will be leading towards the salah. Like you start finding a place to make wudu, you find a good place to read your salah and thereafter you fulfill it and then you are set. And this is why one of the seven of the categories of people who shall be granted a special shade on the day of judgment is a person whose heart is hanging or stuck in the masjid. A masjid refers to a place of worship or the place of sujood is also known as a masjid. If you are concerned about the next prayer immediately after fulfilling the current one, then you are heading in the right direction. That is something amazing. That's a very high level. As soon as I finish Salat al-Dhuhr, for example, I'm concerned about Salat al-Asr and I'm already planning where am I going to read this Salat. I've met many people. Sometimes I'm impressed by people in the poorest countries. In the poorest countries. But their masajid are so full. Their masajid are so full. I visited West Africa. And trust me, Salat al-Fajr, as I was entering, trying to enter the masjid, it was packed, packed, full, completely. And I'm thinking to myself, Salatul Fajr, is there something happening? There was no talk or lecture, nothing. No one even knew that I was going to be there or anyone else was going to be there for that matter. But the brother with me told me, no, my brother, if you want to come into the masjid for Salatul Fajr, you will have to come here 20 minutes before the adhan. And I looked at myself and I said, our countries where our life is slightly easier in salatul fajr there are three guys four guys and our life is so easy we don't want it that we lose the akhirah and those who didn't have the dunya actually get it don't let that happen don't be from among those who you had a luxurious life here everything was very good you know you had the Beautiful houses, beautiful cars, beautiful jobs, beautiful food, beautiful everything, but you lost in the hereafter. And we don't want to be replaced by those who had nothing in this world. They had to walk five kilometers to get a bucket of dirty water to heat it up in order to be able to drink from it. And yet they earn the akhirah. They will be the VIPs on the day of judgment and we lose out. We all want to be the VIPs. We should. And that's why I decided to talk about this. I'm so inspired by people that I've seen who give Salah so much of preference. They don't mind. One day we visited a country, very poor country in the southern part of Africa, in Malawi. And I recall we walked through some fields and there was a, motor vehicles could not go there, that particular place. And as we walk through, we see Sami Allah Liman Hamida. It was the time of Salatul Asr. And there was a large group of people who had actually come up from Ruku' and ready to go for sujood. Who were they? they? They were the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A place and a time where no one would have known that they are Muslims. And these people are praying for Allah. They don't even have proper water. My brothers, my sisters with us, do you know you don't have to turn the tap on anymore for water to come out? You just have to put your hand there and it detects the hand and it drops down.
That's the water. And we still don't do wudu and we still don't fulfill salah. And the other men and women back in the poorest countries have walked five kilometers to get the bucket in order to share it between 200 people to fulfill wudu and the salah. And we are still not ashamed of ourselves. They've done it. You follow what I'm saying? Surely we should be embarrassed. Give it importance. This is your salah. Don't miss it. And I promise you, your life will change. And if you may still have obstacles in your life, but I swear to you, Wallahi al-Azim, I promise you, by Allah, your hereafter will be guaranteed, inshallah, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're close to Allah with your salah, it will help you in your character, your conduct. You meet brothers, you meet so many brothers and sisters every day, subhanallah. And you become close, your heart is softened. This is what we need to achieve, my brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah make us from those who can learn a lesson. I fear, and I always fear, the verse where Allah says, If you are going to turn away from obeying Allah's instruction, He will replace you with others who will not be like that. They will not be like you. I don't want to be replaced. I don't want to be replaced. I refuse to be replaced. I will worship Allah willingly, willing obedience. And I'm sure the same feeling you have. So let's do something about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this day a day of change in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this day a day of turning, a day of taking the salah more seriously from today. كتاب الله ترقى جنانه وتنى العظيم الأجر والغفران رتله روي القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان